Meghan Markle and Prince Harry release statement following Netflix documentary criticism. Volume 1 and 2 of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Netflix documentary has been released. As with many of their projects, there is quite a bit of controversy and discourse happening online. Apparently, one thing many people are saying is disturb the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. In a statement to ET, their global press secretary addressed criticism they have received for being so public about their lives on Netflix after withdrawing from the royal family for reasons of privacy. In fact, they never said anything about privacy. The Duke and Duchess have never cited privacy as the reason for stepping back. The statement reads, This distorted narrative was intended to trap the couple into silence. In fact, their statement announcing their decision to step back mentions nothing of privacy and reiterates their desire to continue their roles and public duties. Any suggestion otherwise speaks to a key point of this series. The couple announced their decision to step back from being working members of the royal family in January of 2020. They said that they hoped to make a transition this year in starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. In their statement at the time, they also stated that they would work to become financially independent, and a deal with Netflix would certainly help with that objective. The couple also said that they were planning to split their time between the UK and North America, meaning both Canada and the US. They eventually landed in Montecito, California, for their primary residence. In the rest of the statement on Harry and Meghan, the global press secretary said they are choosing to share their story on their terms. The tabloid media has created an entirely untrue narrative that permeates press coverage and public opinion. The facts are right in front of them. Prince Harry heartbreakingly recounts driving through the tunnel where Princess Diana died. Prince Harry's new memoir, Spare, offers a heartbreaking glimpse into his grief over the death of his mother, Princess Diana. In a new excerpt published by People, the Duke of Sussex recalls driving through the same tunnel in Paris where Diana got into a fatal car crash in 1997. At the time, Harry was 23 years old and attending the 2007 Rugby World Cup semi-final in Paris. The World Cup provided me with a driver, and on my first night in the City of Light, I asked him if he knew the tunnel where my mother. I watched his eyes in the rear view, growing large. The tunnel is called Pont de Alma, I told him. The excerpt reads, Harry writes that he requested the driver go through the tunnel at 65 miles per hour. The exact speed Mummy's car had supposedly been driving, according to police, at the time of the crash. Not 120 miles per hour, as the press originally reported. The Duke of Sussex then writes about driving past the hotel where Diana had spent some of her final moments with her then-boyfriend, Doty Fayed. Off we went, weaving through traffic, cruising past the Ritz, where Mummy had her last meal with her boyfriend that August night. Harry writes, Then we came to the mouth of the tunnel. We zipped ahead, went over the lip at the tunnel's entrance, the bump that supposedly sent Mummy's Mercedes veering off course. But the lip was nothing. We barely felt it. He continues, As the car entered the tunnel, I leaned forward, watched the light change to a kind of water orange, watched the concrete pillars flicker past. I counted them, counted my heartbeats, and in a few seconds we emerged from the other side. I sat back. Quietly I said, Is that all of it? It's nothing. Just a straight tunnel. I'd always imagined the tunnel as some treacherous passageway, inherently dangerous, but it was just a short, simple, no-frills tunnel. No reason anyone should ever die inside it. Harry writes that he requested the driver go through the tunnel one more time. Still, he shares, he felt unsettled by the closure he thought he was seeking. It had been a very bad idea. I'd had plenty of bad ideas in my 23 years, but this one was uniquely ill-conceived, he writes. I told myself that I wanted closure, but I didn't really. Deep down, I'd hoped to feel in that tunnel what I'd felt when JLP gave me the police files. Disbelief. Doubt. Instead, 
That was the night all doubt fell away. She's dead, I thought. My God, she's really gone for good, he adds. I got the closure I was pretending to seek. I got it in spades. And now I'd never be able to get rid of it. I'd thought driving the tunnel would bring an end, or brief cessation, to the pain, the decade of unrelenting pain. Instead it brought on the start of pain part two. Rare photos of Princess Diana as a mom you probably haven't seen before. On June 21st, 1982, Princess Diana and Prince Charles welcomed their firstborn son. From the moment she became a mom, Dee began breaking from royal tradition. Unlike prior royal mothers, who gave birth in a royal palace, she birthed the heir to the throne in the more ordinary St. Mary's Hospital in London.